Hey, what's up guys? This is Razor Triple right here. Today, we will be talking about some garage band basics so that you can get started and use your garage band to make beats in no time. Now, to use GarageBand, you might want to use your preferred iOS device, whether it's your iPhone XS Mac, whether it's your iPhone 6S, or whether you're going to be using your iPad. Now, personally, I prefer using the iPad because it has a way larger screen. I'm going to start by opening the GarageBand app, and we're going to go through the basics here. Now, as you can see, this is our main menu, so to speak. These are basically different places where you can store your projects. Now, if you have multiple iOS devices or even your MacBook, you might want to store your projects on the iCloud drive so that it could be easily accessible across all devices. Now, let's just start right here by pressing create a song and the first menu that shows up a little menu here that allows you to choose which instrument you want to start if you want to go straight to making a beat um, let's say we want to start with the keyboard the first preset you get is a grand piano right here as you can see on the center of the screen when you press it you will be able to change all the sound tons of presets to choose from Holy keyboards to synths to bass to pads to effects so now we're gonna just start by making a little loop a bit of a progression right here now how do we start this button right here on the right corner is for the settings i recommend start by having an idea of what sort of genre or what you want to head to by choosing the tempo and the key signature right away a minor scale you just press on the key signature if you're doing a project halfway you can change the key signature it's going to transpose everything so it is automatic it will transpose everything so that you will be able to continue carrying on your project and see how it would sound a couple of tones higher or lower depending on your choice so let's just start with the A minor and the D minor loop alright perfect so now we have our first loop from here, you might want to be pressing this button right here, and this is to open the playlist. This is basically in your Fruity Loops where everything is going to be showing right here. This is basically the song. And right here, you can keep adding more instruments, or you can keep making the song longer. Now, how to make the song longer? No problem. You just press right here on the right corner of your screen, and there's a plus sign. This will allow you to increase the length of your song. Um, let's go with, let's make it a 36. How do I continue? What do I do from here? No problem. So if you want to keep populating this whole project so that it will keep looping and looping, no problem. You just press here on the new re recorded track. You double tap it and press loop and it will keep doing the same progression over and over till the end. Right now we're just going to start like this and then we're going to work with the arrangement. So we're going to continue by pressing the plus sign at the bottom so you can keep adding new instruments. And now let's add some drums. We would usually recommend using the beat sequencer or the more sounds so you can get a little bit of a different type of MPC type interface so you can record them. Now let's use 808 Flex just to begin. Now. You can record your own live drum set or you can use the beat sequencer, whichever you prefer. Let's just go a little bit further with what these knobs do now. Play with these sounds until you make a loop. This knob right here is the drive loop and it basically will automatically add some distortion to it. Right here, the distortion, I'm going to cover it separately, just to let you know, distortion adds a little bit of juice without necessarily harming the sound, it actually tightens it. The crush is a bit crush. Low cut means that it's going to be filtering out. And the high cut does the opposite. Let's just start little by little. 
Personally, I recommend you using each track separately. One track for drums, one track for snare, one track for hi-hat, one track for kick, so that you can have more clarity on the drum loop and that you can cater each sound separately. Because if I'm gonna be using a drive to the whole drum loop, it's gonna destroy the kicks and it's gonna start not being cool. Not gonna be cool at all. What I would recommend is just start by the snare, always gonna be constant, and work with each element of the drum loop individually. Now we have our first snare loop. What you might want to do, make sure that everything you played fits right on tempo. Sometimes you may not land it right exactly in the spot and there's no problem with that. Head over to the playlist so you can have a better view and press this button right here which is for the mixer. This mixer button will give you all the individual settings for that particular track here on Garage. Now let's just start with the track settings you can see that there's this quantization button. What quantization does is that it's gonna be arranging it, whatever MIDI loop that you recorded into the patterns that you did it. Now, if you have a quarter note, it's gonna be making it each quarter note by difference. It's gonna be rated by one eighth note, one sixteenth. Now in this case, since this is not a very irregular, it's very constant. Let's just go with a quarter note. On the piano, let's also do a little bit of quantization so that it goes a little bit more straight. So now we have our snare loop and we're going to continue from here. Remember, we're just going to start out by mapping out this concept and we're going to loop this up and now we're going to make the drums. If I'm satisfied with the drum kit I have, I'm not gonna go through all those menus. Quick way to do that is just press on the track, select duplicate, and then you'll have a second channel. Now keep in mind that if you added some distortion here, the settings will be copied into the next channel. Let's move on with making a kick loop. And we're just gonna loop this up. All right, perfect. Right now, we don't have much variety on the beat, but we're going through the basics, and then we're gonna work on the arrangement. What we're gonna do next is add some hi-hats. Just gonna do through the same process, duplicate. I just created some random notes here because what we're gonna do right here is we're gonna try to quantize it and so you can see the different settings now what I did was not perfect was far from perfect but you can see that as soon as you start choosing the lower numbers it starts quantizing differently and you can actually play with that now what we're gonna do right here is that we're gonna play the loop and we're gonna see which part of it was actually useful and what didn't work out What I see here is that we have a little bit of a kind of a more moving part here in the verse. There's a lot of hi-hats right here. This might be useful. This was terrible. If I don't want to edit this drum loop that I made, what would I do? No problem. You just tap it right here. And just remember that since you loop this whole track. Every change that you do is going to be repeated along the track, so just keep that in mind. What would I do in this case? No problem. If you want to split your track, what you would need to do is just choose, press on the timeline where exactly you want to make that incision, and just press on the track, select split. Now you would need to cut it, and now you have two separate tracks. What you edit on this side is not going to affect the rest of the loop. 
Another quick tip is that if you want to split everything at the same time, no problem. Just select it right here. You just select all the tracks and do the same thing, split. And in this way, you will be able to split all the patterns or whatever incision you want to make on your loop. If I want to edit this particular part, what I would do is I would double tap it and press edit. Now that I press edit, I'll have my piano roll right here. Select this part flick it to the right so that I could start writing. You know that this is one bar, this is the second bar, and these are the four measures. One, two, three, four. And um, let's alternate things a little bit. See what I did? I placed something above it and it overwrote it. It will not be conflicting at all. If I want to join these tracks, Okay, I created a second track so it would be more comfortable to select these tracks. I would double tap them and select join and now you would have the whole loop combined. Now let's see what we got so far. Now, what we would want to do is we would like to add more instruments. How do we do that? Obviously, we press on the plus sign right here. Let's use the keyboard and let's just like a little bit of a bass. Personally, I recommend using the hip hop sub bass. starter pack. Potent, it's straight to the point and it's not really an 808 that's going to mess up your whole track. So just record it. Alright, this is a basic little Beats. loop that I made. If you see what I did, um, you're gonna notice that this just clashed with the 808 sub that I had here. It's like a kick that has a boomy tail. We cannot use that if it's gonna be interfering with a sub bass. So, there is a little note here that is gonna be interfering and it's this one. So, let's just open the track, flick it right here and delete it. No problem. Since these progressions are a little bit fast. If I use the one eighth note, this is not gonna give me what I need. So let's try with the one sixteen. Perfect. I personally don't like to saturate my tracks with a lot of sounds because these beats has to have a vocal so I go really minimal on that. If you finish up mixing your track really well you're gonna notice that you don't really need a lot of sounds to create presence. There's different ways to create presence. For now we're just making a really simple garage band beat. What happens if I would like to add a little bit of zazz to this? Well no problem. Since this is going to be a more active part, let's leave the beats right there. One of the quick ways and the advantages that GarageBand has is that we have the FX button right here. Now we have a filter here, but you can change it to a wobble, reverb, delay, repeater. This is a gate. This is a reverse. This is scrap. This is a tape stop. And this is to bit crush your sounds. And this is a repeater. One really important tip is that let's say you're going to be using the filter and you don't want to be, you, you want something more constant than this. What you can do is press the lock here. It's going to leave the setting that you placed in lock so that you can have a more constant sound and you can do all sorts of shapes with the automation for the effect. Alright, this was a kind of an introduction. For some reason, when you start with an effect like I just did, it might not sound right away. Like, I'm gonna start playing here, and you can see that the effect is not present. But do not worry, because when you will render your track, it will sound. And how do you know that? Well, for some reason, the effect activates when you loop the track. So, if we go from here, and it loops back, you're gonna see You 
you're gonna see that this is going to make everything the way it was supposed to. Hey, what happens if I deleted this by accident? Well, no worry, there's an undo button and you can press it as long as you want so that you can undo all the changes if you didn't like something, if you did something that wasn't pleasantly sounding always the undo button so we talked about the effects we talked about how to make your tracks how to cut them how to do most of the edits we're gonna leave this video right here at this point this is enough for lesson one there's a lot to take if you have any questions write down here in the comment section below raise the treble is always here to answer your questions